Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Go on. And it's something I've heard you speak about a lot recently. The next 10 minute one, right? The next 10 minute okay, one, Okay, keeping yeah. this challenge rolling. Yes. I'm going to become concise. So obviously a big thing in Final Fantasy is love interests and couples and people trying to ship people with people. All day, every day. Every day. And one that you spoke about like quite a bit recently was between Tifa, Aerith. Not just between them. Spoke but so much Zach. about this. I have big feels, man. So this will be a good 10 minute. Give me your 10 minutes that because that's minutes. also when you can insert extra ad breaks. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. All right, all right, okay. Ten minutes. All right, let's go. All right, listen up, bozos. I feel very strongly about this, and I know so many of you do as well. I right. every time I go on Final Fantasy Reddit, I see some variation of you know, you've got your Clariths, you've got your Clotes, and the level of intensity of the argument on. No, Cloud really loves Aerith more. Like it's so clear. Najima wrote in the novella, and it is very true. He wrote in the novella, Aerith loves Cloud more than anyone. She wants nothing more than to come back to see him. Um, and obviously Cloud's. I know, I know you don't know much about Advent Children, but no. you know you see how long he's held up by her death to the point he doesn't show up for Tifa, triggered the living hell out of me. And it's always really clear to me, of course, the Cloud and Aerith relationship is so strong. Now, is there some play of Zack in there that you know, Aerith sees? Zack in Cloud and you know, his mannerisms are what draws her first of all but then is it also true that other golden saucer she says nah I want to find the real Cloud I want to find the real you and you know so it, it does tee up that Cloud and Aerith are far stronger and this is it they are so much stronger than just a friendship relationship I was chatting about this with Brie and something that it always amazes me how fans miss this like the, the nature of Cloud and Aerith's relationship why it's as intense as it is, because yes, Aerith's first love was Zack. Yes, when he does she go in when she does go on the live stream, they do end up becoming like live stream lovers. And, um, Cloud of course in the story does end up going forming a family unit with Tifa. I think that's how it was left off, like basically after Advent Children, Cloud got over his um, his self-hatred blame of Aerith's death, more or less raised Marlene and Denzel in a standard family relationship. And of course they ploughed under the high wind. They ploughed! There's no doubt about it, man. So like, when it comes to like romantic relationships, I am firmly in the camp of Cloud and Tifa and Zack and Aerith. But why the difficulty with the Clarith? And I feel like it's because people don't fundamentally understand that there are different levels of love. Uh, than just romance, than just also platonic friends. There's one that I feel like everyone misses, and it is the key to understanding Cloud and Aerith. And what would settle all of this never ending beef on who loves who more, and like honestly, dude, the degrees that this goes to, I see Clarith people like pull out evidence, they're like, these cloud tea for people, they're just so dumb, they're so ignorant, to, like, they just choose what they want to see, and it's like, Bro, first and foremost, though I perceive my way of viewing these relationships as the correct one, I'm not going to take away anyone else's, uh, what makes them feel good, who they want to ship. Um, this is the freedom of an art form, is to engage in whatever kind of relationships you want. Now, do I... <laughs> I don't know, some of them cross the line, like the Snow Hope ones. That right? crosses the freaking line. I've even seen uh, Gold Bears and freaking Fusoya, man. Moon Jesus! <laughs> Give me the goddamn chills. I've seen every combination of shipping under the sun. Um, but so no, so I always like, advocate for that freedom just to like whoever you like. But let's get real with it. The one thing that people keep missing is that Final Fantasy VII is premised around a spiritual concept. There is a spiritual nature to the game. The planet literally works on those souls exist in this thing. And uh, arguably even with the introduction of Minerva and Crisis Core, deities exist as well. And what that says to me is that Cloud and Aerith's relationship is a teacher-guru one. And a guru in the concept of it with you know, mostly Hinduism is such a powerful relationship. Gurus and yogis and maharajis, these are like the, the spiritual 
like guides and teachers like Buddha was to his disciples or Jesus was to the 12 disciples um, and the love that these disciples have for their guru is so strong. I remember reading some books from like Adi Ashanti and um, Alan Watts and a few others who had, you know, speak about their guru and the intensity of the love that they have for that person who teaches them how to open their heart open their mind to much broader, more transcendental qualities and traits, how to also reconcile their own human condition, their conditioned selves versus their true selves, you know, getting rid of their trauma, their baggage, their limited perceptions, their conditioning. Um, let's head back this way, <laughs> someone's reading over there. Um, and to me, like, especially even with a therapist, like, let's take a more streamlined and easy to conceptualize, especially for us Westerners. Because again, this is Japan and this is Eastern and Eastern philosophy and ideology plays a role. And that's why I think the cloud air with relationship really stems from. But even like a therapist, I remember saying on stream, like, there's a big thing with uh, people falling in love with their therapist, attaching emotions and affection and the notion of love onto their therapist. Because a therapist is helping someone unpack their trauma heal their mind, heal their emotions, and as a person comes into an awakening of that, hey, cat, hello, cat, hello, I've only got 10 minutes, so I can't be long. Hello, pretty, hello, ooh. <laughs> um, like it's a very common thing for a therapist to have to set very rigid boundaries. And we've even seen, not even just in therapy, but also things like, you know, Bikram yoga, we watched this like cult of orgasms the other day. Like, this is also how like cults and you know, re religious institutions can end up uh, manipulating and using and abusing their followers because it's very common for when a person is working with like deep emotional things with themselves that as they waken up to it, as they feel more love and affection, they attribute it to the therapist. They attribute it to the guru. And that's a very common, right? issue in these kind of relationships and it's the the onus is on the guru to create that separation and that is so the cloud aerith relationship he comes from being broken he comes from literally playing with masks and personas and you know his ideology at the start of the game is he helps avalanche he says i don't give a shit about the planet i'm doing it for a paycheck that's Cloud at the start of the game. You then go to Cloud post you know, all the lessons he's had with Aerith. Aerith, who, what does she do repeatedly throughout the game? She's teaching him. She's showing him. It was very clear in the remake, you know, get, has him grab a basket, has him head down the garden, and she starts talking about the planet. She starts talking about flowers, tells Cloud to listen to them, to speak to them. There's this little scene where Cloud, like, like keep up the good work, guys. He doesn't believe in it, but yeah. she starts altering his perception the planet the plants they're here to teach us a lesson this is high fantasy shamanism and Aerith does play that role um, even if you go back to OG like the last words she left off on with Cloud in the, uh, the forest the sleeping forest it was like Cloud let me handle it just work on yourself just focus on yourself so you don't have another breakdown and there's so many times where Aerith throughout the FF series is always trying to teach him in Advent Children like forgiveness from who? Who do you want to be forgiven? Like myself. Like she's always there as this spiritual guide to him. And you no, know, then by the end we have Cloud who literally has a spiritual awakening. He's going, uh, oh, I've been thinking about the plants, the flowers, the sky, trees, our place in the world. Like this is a fundamentally different Cloud to the one at the start, and it's all attributed to Aerith. And it's like, as Cloud finds himself and he finds his purpose and he becomes, you know, he's basically like assigned as the leader of the Star Seven, but he isn't really. He ends up like having another breakdown, Sid Highwind has to take control, and he's kind of a crappy leader. Then before the final Sephiroth fight, what does Cloud say? He says, before we go into this, I need you to go and all find your own individual reasons for doing this thing, because Cloud he becomes like so connected with his, his own emotions and the importance of you know, reconciling your consciousness when it comes to because it's also the power in the game consciousness is connected to power and that's all oh, why cloud is that powerful and i just see it that as cloud awakens to himself Aerith being at the center of all of that that's why he has so much love with her 
that's why I've seen like so many stories, the level of love that they have for their guru. And is it any wonder now why Aerith says in the remake, you can't fall in love with me? Because she has this is a lesson of teaching Cloud how to love himself, not to fall in love with her, and how mixed those channels can get. And that to me does make them like on a level, like they're, they're a spiritual partnership and that requires like a far deeper understanding a far deeper level of intimacy than just romance and I feel like we don't really oh shit ah, the time's up <laughs> we don't really pay much attention to them we're not really that, that kind of spiritually uh, centered us westerners in how we sort of perceive these games but that is the fundamental premise of Final Fantasy 7 and that to me is what Cloud and Air's relationship is it ain't just romance that's Cloud and Tifa's relationship, that's Zack and Aerith's, but there's something else. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a soulmate in a way, but a soulmate mm. with a different purpose to it than just plowing. Kind of went over on my time a little bit, but there we go. <laughs> and that's it, it's done. That's it. How easy is that? How yeah. simple is that? Yeah. Or that, or they're just all polyamorous, and like Zach's gonna be back from the live stream, and the four of them are just gonna. No. <laughs> I'm sure some. I know. Is monogamy like tight, Ginge? Mm. What really? Monogamy. You don't like monogamy. Well, what is it again? <laughs> <laughs> monogamy is like single partnerships. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm starting that. Yeah. 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 You can't get any third or fourth wheels involved. Um. Maybe, one at some point. <laughs> that man, you're approved through and through. Yeah. Anyway guys, that's just my perception. That's my feeling on the cloud and air relationship, love triangle. Let me know in the comment section below if you see it any different. I'll see you on the next video.